Let's bring in CNN military analyst and former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, retired General Wesley Clark. Uh, General, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, you, you know, Ukraine is claiming full control of Kyiv with its deputy defense minister declaring the region liberated. But do you actually think Russian troops are going to regroup for a later attack on the capital city? Yes, I think, you know, I think it's, it's great tactical success on the part of the Ukrainians. They've driven the Russians back. But this is so far from over that we've got to be very, very careful not to raise expectations. What has to happen now is lots more support has to come in to help Ukraine to drive the Russians out, to drive them out in the south and to strengthen the Ukrainian force in the Donbass area. Now, what's going to happen is, as you can see from the map, the Russians are north and south of Dnipro. Dnipro is going to be the next key objective. If they can drive to Dnipro, they'll cut off the Ukrainian forces that are holding back the separatists in the Donbass. And this is the next Russian objective, is to do an envelopment of these forces, cut them off, annihilate them. That's a substantial part of Ukraine's army. In order to prevent that, they've got to have heavy fighting equipment, not javelins, not stingers. That's fine for helping defend cities. They need tanks. They need mobile artillery. They need lots of ammunition. They need fuel. They need repairs. We don't have that for them. It's got to come from our uh, NATO allies in Eastern Europe, and they've got to get it there and get it there quickly. So the Ukrainians clearly have to prepare for what's coming next. I'm curious, as we are you know, watching this uh, from the sidelines, many of us uh, 30 days into this conflict, what else are you hearing in military circles about the campaign? Well, what we're hearing is, of course, the Ukrainians can really fight. They want to win this fight. They don't want to hold. They want to push the Russians out. And here's the thing, that for campaign after campaign in the last 50 years, 70 years, the United States tried to help countries defend themselves who weren't that prepared to fight. Now we've got a first world country. Their soldiers have education just as good as ours. They're just as good technically as we are. We give them our modern weapons, they can use them in 24 hours. Plus, they know how to fight on that terrain. So we're going to have to do a better job of listening to the Ukrainians and what they need and get them the equipment they say they need. And by the way, not only do they need tanks and artillery, they need aircraft. They need air cover for those forces. So somehow we've got to go back and revisit those issues and get them the aircraft they need. They need air support and they can fly it but they've got to have the aircraft. General, what should we be reading into U.S. intelligence that's telling us that Russia is shifting its focus to having this victory in early May? You know, if Russia takes control of parts of Ukraine, would Putin just stop there? Wouldn't he want more? Oh, he's going to... The, the, the goal is not any different. He published what he wanted um, back in uh, December. He wants Ukraine. He wants the Baltic states. He wants control over Eastern Europe. He wants to shatter NATO and he wants the United States out. This is for all the marbles. Uh, all he's trying to do right now is, is stall. He'd like to stall Western reinforcement of Ukraine. He'd like to have us emotionally, morally disarmed to think that's all he wants, uh, but it isn't. So he wants to disrupt the international system. And with him is China in this. China's uh, on the sidelines, maybe, but rooting for them. China's looking at Taiwan. China wants to assert itself. So uh, China and Russia have teamed up on this. Ukraine is just the current battlefield. But if the Ukrainians defeat Russia on this battlefield, everything changes. So the best way to protect NATO, the best way to protect the international system, is to give Ukraine the assistance it says it needs and let them handle Russia on this battlefield. General, do you believe negotiations between Russia and Ukraine will wind up ending? Uh, will it be negotiations that end this war, or will it be decided on the battlefield? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, whatever, whatever shape these negotiations ultimately take is going to depend on what happens on the battlefield. Uh, but, you know, it's in the interest of both Russia and Ukraine to keep these negotiations going. Uh, looking for an opening? For the Russians, forestalling of uh, Western assistance to Ukraine, raising hopes, dashing hopes, finding information, intimidating the Ukrainians. And at the same time, President Zelensky knows he has to be a willing participant in this because 
the European allies expected to. I mean, Germany, Italy, France, they just want it over. They're very short-sighted on this. They don't understand uh, fully what's really at stake. They want to go back to business as usual in Europe, I guess. But they've got to understand that there is no more business as usual. These sanctions are for real. They've got to be kept on Russia. And the only way through this is to support Ukraine wholeheartedly and let them handle Russia militarily on the ground. So the ideal negotiation outcome is Russia says, please let me bring all of my troops out of Ukraine safely. You can have your country. That's the outcome the international community should be working for. All right, General Wesley Clark, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Ukraine says more than 4,000 people were evacuated through humanitarian corridors on Saturday. But with Russian attacks making it hard to keep the corridors open, some refugees are finding their way to safety through more unconventional methods. CNN's Ben Weedman has that. Everything will be all right, he sings, for every one of us. Words of comfort for those desperately in need. Popular singer and former lawmaker Sviatoslav Vakarchuk goes from village to village with a simple message. Smile. This church in the village of Bashtanka is now home, temporary home, for those who have managed to flee Russian-occupied territory. Volunteering in the kitchen, Svetlana Lyashuk finds peace, but not peace of mind. It's really hard, says Svetlana. People here are very nice, but I just want to go home. Vitali Butochel, a mechanic in peacetime, now runs a complex operation feeding and housing the displaced. This war, this Atavina, this all make us like a family very closely. The church feels like an oasis of the ordinary, far from the madness outside. Early evening and a bus approaches marked Deti, Russian for children. Alas, no guarantee of safety. It's coming from the town of Snihorivka, under Russian control. But it didn't pass through a humanitarian corridor negotiated by the Red Cross. The arrangement whereby these people are able to get out of the Russian-occupied areas to here is very simple. Men on the bus give Russian soldiers food and cigarettes, and the Russian soldiers let them pass. Larisa Shevchenko made it out, but remains tormented by fear for those who couldn't get away. Everything is really bad, she says. Her parents in Sniharivka are still hiding out in the basement. She hopes they'll get out tomorrow. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Bashtanka, southern Ukraine.